In my time on the internet, I have seen many amazing and incredible Fire Emblem collections. Mine is neither one of those things. But I do have some interesting stuff, and I thought it'd be fun today to show you guys what I have in my collection, and I'd also really like to know what you have in your collection, so either drop me a comment in the comment section below, or join us on our Discord, which I'll link to in the description, and share pictures of your collection in our Fire Emblem chat channel. So my name is Stevie, welcome to another episode of Lucky Crit, and today we're going to be talking all about Fire Emblem collections. And without further ado, let's get started in chronological order. The earliest thing in my Fire Emblem collection does indeed happen to be Fire Emblem 7, the original Fire Emblem that we got here in the West. I do have some Nintendo Power magazines that uh, originally sort of got me interested in Fire Emblem. That's somewhere. I didn't really want to dig it up because I have a million uh, old Nintendo Powers. But for today, I just figured we'd start with this. And uh, I don't actually happen to have the box for this because of the way that I acquired it. I've actually talked about this before, I believe, on Gas Station's podcast that he had me on a while ago. But I'll give you a little brief rundown about my introduction to the series. Someday I'll do a full video and actually like go into detail and everything. But basically all you need to know is that I saw Fire Emblem in Nintendo Power and was really interested in it. And I ended up asking some kids on the school bus. And, you know, after a couple of days of trying to remind them to bring it to school so they could sell it to me, I did end up purchasing it from somebody on the way to school and the rest is history. So that's that, that's my first piece in my collection. Up next is obviously going to be the Sacred Stones, which I do happen to have the box for and a lot of original stuff. I actually found something today that I didn't even remember having, and that is this, the official strategy guide for Sacred Stones back in the day. These things are honestly just always really cool to have in a collection, even if you've beaten the crap out of the game and even know, you know, potentially more than some of the people who made it, but it's just really cool, it's a nice piece of promotional material or art at the very least, and they tend to have a lot of the, uh, you know, more high quality character art inside of them too, which is really, really nice. But yeah, so I didn't even remember having this, but apparently I do. Apparently I had it from a long time ago. So moving along, the next piece in the collection is going to be this. This happens to be, you know, one of the older Nintendo powers that I was able to dig up, featuring Path of Radiance, you know, around the time that it was supposed to come out, which is really cool. Either this Nintendo power or another one did end up featuring Path of Radiance, and actually coming with, if I could open this here, a legit Fire Emblem Path of Radiance map of Tellius, which I think is really, really cool. Someday that's going to go uh, on a wall, maybe be framed even. So we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, that's really cool. I'm glad I dug that up as well. And of course, I am thankful to own Fire Emblem Path of Radiance for the GameCube, because this game is incredibly rare at this point, incredibly expensive. Uh, if you are looking to get this game or the sequel, Radiant Dawn, I would recommend that you kind of wait a little bit. Obviously, the prices are going to continue to rise as time moves forward, but I do have a feeling that there is a possibility that we could see either Path of Radiance or Radiant Dawn, or both, come to a Switch Virtual Console someday. Obviously, there is no Switch Virtual Console right now. I don't know why that's not a thing. <laughs> get on that, Nintendo, please. But I do feel like these games have a lot of potential to end up on a Switch Virtual Console or something like that in the future, so... Do stay tuned for that if you're interested in these games. The next thing I have in the collection is, of course, going to be the sequel, Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn for the Wii. I'm really grateful to own this one as well because this is expensive now, too. And uh, at the time, I was excited for a sequel to Path of Radiance, but when I bought this, I actually still hadn't finished Path of Radiance. I got pretty far, but uh, I don't know. Back in the day, for some reason, I just wasn't into sticking with stuff until I finished it. So I actually played this before I even beat Path of Radiance, interestingly enough. And it does have a pretty cool mechanic where you can actually get some, uh, I think, base stat boosts on some of your characters if you have them maxed in Path of Radiance and you sort of transfer the save file to Radiant Dawn. So that's really cool. The next piece in the collection, moving even more forward, happens to be Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, another really rare title at this point, pretty expensive. You can get it on some of the virtual consoles and such, so it's not impossible to find or get or get your hands on. This one's a little bit more of a divisive game because a lot of people didn't really appreciate it when it first came out. Though I do see a lot more love for it these days, and a lot of people are praising some of the new refinements and quality of life improvements that it did bring, even though it didn't have a lot of the stuff that a lot of us really liked, like, you know, support conversations or uh, things like the rescue system and stuff. So, moving forward, obviously, as you can see so far, I don't have too much of the actual memorabilia type of stuff, but I do have some of it, so we will get to it, but I'm moving forward in chronological order. The next piece of my collection does indeed happen to be the next game in the series, which is... Fire Emblem 13, Fire Emblem Awakening for the Nintendo 3DS. And uh, alongside this game, I did manage to get what I think was a pre-order bonus at the time from GameStop. This is a Fire Emblem Awakening art book. I'll try to uh, flip through it really quick for you guys here. Um, it, it was a pretty cool thing that they did decide to give away. I think 
it was limited to only the people that pre-ordered it from GameStop and obviously while supplies lasted and everything, but I'm pretty happy that I managed to get this. This was sitting above my desk at college for the longest time, and uh, I do like the artwork of Yusuke Kozaki, so I was pretty inspired by this when I first got it, which is really cool. I'd imagine that's probably one of the more rare pieces of my collection at this point. The next piece of my collection happens to be the Fire Emblem Fates Special Edition. Thankfully, these were incredibly hard to come by back in the day. They were incredibly rare. When it first went out on pre-order, it sold out very, very quickly. A lot of people started to scalp it on sites like eBay for hundreds and hundreds of dollars more than it was originally worth. It was $80 retail, but, I mean, it was going over, like, 200 I even saw other YouTubers and people like Etika buying his for, like, 300 something I think. It was ridiculous. It was really, really bad. It was an awful time to be a fan and just want some extra stuff along with the game. It came with... A copy of the game that happened to have all three of the paths on it, so you didn't have to actually download anything to the 3DS internal memory and waste space in there. So that was nice by default. And it also came with this nice art book, which I'll flip through really quickly here. Yeah, it's just really bad. Scalpers are really scummy. Nintendo's had a problem with it for years because, you know, they don't release that many of their products. They don't tend to oversaturate things. And so people, you know, abuse that and take advantage of that. And it ends up costing a lot of Nintendo fans a lot of money just to get the stuff that they want which is really, really bad. Scalpers are just incredibly scummy, awful people. <laughs> but yeah, it's a nice little art book. Showcases pretty much everything throughout the game, aside from, like, super heavy spoiler stuff. Also a nice little uh, Fire Emblem timeline there, which is cool, too. It also came with this 3DS bag, which I don't think I've ever used, but it's just kind of nice and kind of cool to have in your collection. And I also know that with a lot of the Fire Emblem Fates Special Editions, anybody that got to GameStop early enough did in fact get some Fire Emblem Fates keychains. So those were really cool. Obviously with the way that I got it, I didn't end up getting any of those, but it's okay. But I did see them being sold on places like Craigslist and other things too. I even saw people locally on Craigslist trying to scalp the game and the keychains and stuff. So yeah, it was, it was just crazy. Yeah, actually, so this particular copy of the Special Edition... I remember looking for it everywhere, I was even looking on eBay, went to all of my local GameStops, I literally made phone calls to everywhere in my state, like every single GameStop in the state trying to figure out if they had a copy of this. I was super excited to get my hands on it, but it was like so daunting to try to find a copy and find a copy that wasn't scalped either. So I ended up not finding anything, it was a couple of weeks I think after the release of this, and I ended up settling and paying $180 for it on eBay. So $100 over the original price, which is not good. So I paid a scalper, I got scalped for this game. However, during my search, I actually went to a local GameStop and one of the employees there like knew that I was like looking for it and actually ended up writing down my name in case they got any other copies of it in the future. And what ended up happening, interestingly enough, is that they did get another copy. I don't know if it's from somebody that didn't end up picking it up or whatever the case happened to be, but they got another copy and this female employee at GameStop actually gave me a call and told me that they had it. And they had it for me. They were holding it for me if I still wanted it. And I was like, oh my god, yes. It was incredible. So I actually went and got it. And so obviously that was another 80. But there is the actual real price that I was supposed to pay for it. But anyway, long story short, I ended up giving that copy to my good friend Cameron, who happens to be the other co-host on the Fireside Emblem podcast. So if you're interested in hearing that, you can check it out up here. We'll definitely be doing more of that in the future at some point. And uh, I also made, as the first ever Fire Emblem video on this channel, an unboxing and review of the Fire Emblem Fates Special Edition. So uh, if you want to watch that kind of cringy old, not as good as today's video's video, you can also check that out up here uh, if, you want, if you're interested in seeing that. But it's just kind of an interesting piece of trivia that this was the first thing I did a Fire Emblem video on on this channel. Now moving even more forward than that, I ended up picking up some Fire Emblem Amiibo. I still need to get more. I would like to have the whole collection. I would definitely like to have like Almond Celica and even Krom and stuff. So uh, I need to work on that. But for now, for the time being, the ones that I do have are Marth and Ike. And I talked about it a little bit on the live stream, but this Ike kind of has some derpy eyes. So I think at some point I'll probably want to get another Ike one too. Because I think uh, between the different printing runs, I think they actually made Ike's Amiibo worse quality with the second run of them. So if I could find an earlier one, that'd probably be better. But... Yeah, his eyes are a little, uh, little off-center here. But anyway, yeah, so I have those. And I also did manage to get, as another sort of weird piece of memorabilia in this collection, this Caraform figure of Krom. His head's a little bit wobbly, but... Once I saw this online, I was like, alright, I gotta have that. Like, it's just so cool looking. I like the sort of chibi-fied effect of it, but it still looks really, really awesome. Krom is probably one of my favorite blue-haired lords in Fire Emblem, so... I just had to have it. I really like his design. And uh, this is one of the weirder pieces that I have in my collection. I would really like to own 
that figure of uh, Tharja, or Tharia, who's like leaning over the bookshelf or the stack of books on like a chair or something like that. That figure is really, really cool for uh, multiple reasons, but you know, aside from the fan service stuff, I just think it'd be really cool to have like on a shelf or like as a bookend or something like that. Just a nice little piece of art. I also like the Cordelia one too, but I think uh, I'd rather have the Tharja one for sure. So at some, some point, someday, I'll probably end up buying one of those because I really like that. But yes, moving forward, we also have, once again, thankfully, I happen to own the Fire Emblem Echoes Limited Edition. This was another close call type of situation because I ended up having to run to GameStop like the second that it was announced, the day that it was announced. I was actually making videos for this channel at this point on Echoes. And when it was announced, I literally ran, I stopped what I was doing, ran to GameStop, pre-ordered this, and then came back home and finished what I was doing and actually made an episode, a brief little video, news video, discussing this special edition or uh, limited edition in this case, and telling people to go to their GameStop and pre-order it because uh, the GameStop website at the time was not taking any more pre-orders, but I managed to go there in person and get my pre-order. So that's really, really cool. Uh, this came with a number of things, and one of the pre-order bonuses from GameStop, it's a little bit dusty, happens to be this uh, sort of little map of Mila versus Duma. And on the back side, it's got this sort of reflective version of it. It's probably like really blinding and bad in the camera, but really kind of interesting. This was pretty limited. You had to be lucky to get one of these because uh, they didn't have too many to give away to the people who pre-ordered, but I got there early enough and I was able to get it, thankfully. It also came with the uh, art book and sound selection CD, which you can see back there. I'll go get it in a moment. And also these cool little pins of uh, Marth, Alm, and Celica that someday I'll probably end up, I don't know, doing something with, putting them somewhere. But I thought this was really cool. When I saw these, I was I was hyped. I like that. I like that a lot. These are really, really nice little pins. The art book is actually really nice, too. This is like the first full art book that actually came with one of the Fire Emblem games, which I thought was really interesting. Unfortunately, it doesn't have like as much in here as I was kind of hoping for, but it does go through you know, a lot of the characters it has some artwork that we've kind of never seen before of some of these characters. And the really unfortunate thing is that we never ended up getting like the full collection of Echo's artwork either of some of, you know, especially some of these later characters like Sonya. We don't have this full piece of artwork of Sonya or anybody like that at this point, which is kind of crappy, but they always tend to do that with Fire Emblem. I noticed that with Awakening and other stuff too. Even though there's full artwork of the entire cast, because obviously they had to make it and plan it out, we never get it, even in the art books, which is just weird. Um, I can understand them not wanting to, like, spoil stuff in the art books, but eventually I would imagine that they'd release it somehow. But anyway, this is cool. It shows, you know, a lot of the designs, the revamps of everything from Gaiden. And there's also, I believe, a really cool page in here I was going to show you, too. Here's all of the monsters and stuff, which is interesting to see. Some of which I was interested in figuring out because, you know, uh, the Bonewalker here happens to have this weird sort of almost mammoth skull shield that I was kind of wondering about in the game. There is actually a like an axe or a cleaver stuck in the head of the zombie. I was wondering that because the sprite in the world map has a weird, uh, you know, cleaver in its head. But yeah, just, just cool to see, just a cool piece to have in the collection as well. The actual game case itself for Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia also does include this sort of uh, reversible cover, which happens to have the original Gaiden artwork on it, which is really, really cool to see. I'm not sure if the normal version comes with it, but I know for sure the special edition does. Uh, I happen to like it, so I switched it, but really, really cool. And that's gonna bring us to the end of this video. That's actually everything that I have in the collection. Not too huge of a collection. I'm really fortunate to have some of the more rare stuff at this point, like limited editions, but I don't actually have, you know, a lot of the Japan exclusive stuff, any of the history books or anything like that. So I would definitely love to see what you guys have. Be sure to let me know in the comment section or on Discord where you can share images of your collection. So thank you so much for watching and getting this far into the video. If you did enjoy it and enjoy the conversation, do me a solid and slash the thumbs up down below. And also be sure to get subscribed so you don't miss any future episodes of Lucky Crit. If you're also really awesome, you'll click the little notification bell so that whenever we put out a video, you'll get a notification straight to your phone so you'll know as soon as the next video launches. I also have to give a huge shout out to all of our amazing patrons who help make content like this possible and help us creating as many videos as we can. I know some of you guys out there wish that I made more videos every single week and uploaded more often, but sometimes it's just impossible and with, you know, real life stuff going on and other work and things like that that I have to do. It's not always possible, but thanks to these patrons, more videos are able to be created. So thanks to these guys. You guys are awesome. I love you. Thank you so much. You can also check out our merchandise if you're interested, if you want some new stuff for your wardrobe. That link will be in the description below as well. And also be sure to follow us on Twitter for any news and updates that get revealed on the fly. And I'll see you all next time.